Yo, what is up everybody and welcome back to another Madden 17 online game The 32 team preview series for the upcoming NFL season implies in the name that we're covering all 32 teams Even a team that has like a 1% chance of winning the Super Bowl like the Chicago Bears the Chicago Bears aren't even entering the season with Super Bowl aspirations So why preview the Chicago Bears in the first place? Why not just maybe skip them and move on? Because the Chicago Bears are a team too, man. They're a team. They got a plan. It's not the same exact plan as the New England Patriots this year, but they've got a plan. It's worth going over as Zach Miller is going to get that catch right there. But as you guys probably got the gist by now, we don't really talk about the gameplay while we're doing this series. We just talk about the team, go over their roster, talk about their strengths and weaknesses, see what they got to improve on, go over you know their draft class and stuff like that. And the Chicago Bears' draft class doesn't really have too many players because they traded away most of their picks to get what they're hoping to be their franchise quarterback at the number two position. They did a blockbuster trade on draft day to move up one spot in the draft to take a guy the 49ers probably weren't thinking of taking in Mitch Trubitsky. Were the Niners thinking of taking him? We'll never know, but I don't think they were, but they got a pretty good deal for, you know, what are we moving that one spot and taking the guy they were probably taking at number two. Meanwhile, this is not about the Niners. This is about the Chicago Bears. Now, I'm going to make a Super Bowl prediction right now and say that the Chicago Bears are not going to be in the Super Bowl. I'm also going to make a prediction and say that I do not think the Bears are going to have the worst record in the NFL. First of all, talking about Trubisky, he might not even be the starter on day one. Mike Glennon is the projected starter right now. He got a pretty decent contract, so... And it was probably the guy going into training camp at least. But when you look at the Chicago Bears roster, I honestly don't think it's as bad as you may think it is. Now, the main problem for them last year was the quarterback position. That was by far the worst position for them, it felt like, because whether it was Jay Culler or... Well, Hoyer wasn't that bad, but mainly Jay Culler and Matt Barkley, it was a rolling train wreck at the quarterback position. Otherwise, the Bears... They finished 3-13 last year, but they weren't. their roster isn't as bad as their record would say. And that's, the NFL is a quarterback-driven league, and you have some pretty bad quarterbacks. That's what's going to happen to you. You also had a couple injury problems, but, I mean, that's why Color went down. But still, Color wasn't playing that well before he got hurt. Let's be real. So, Mike Glennon comes in, and if Mike Glennon doesn't throw 20 interceptions this season, I think the Bears... You know, have a chance of finishing with an okay record, like a 5-11 and 11 record or a 6-10 record. Like I said, this year they don't have any Super Bowl aspirations. All they really want this year is to get the young guys some playing experience, develop some guys like, you know, Kevin White's of the world, the Kyle Fuller's of the world, the Leonard Floyd's of the world. It's mainly about those guys and maybe Trubisky. We'll see if Trubisky takes the field. But looking at the Bears roster, one of the main guys that you would know from this team who only played one season because he was a rookie last year, is Jordan Howard. Jordan Howard really bursted onto the scene, didn't get the starting job at first. There was a lot of Jeremy Langford, and there was questions about who would take over once Matt Forte left and why Matt Forte was let go in the first place. Well, I don't think the Bears thought Jordan Howard, their fifth-round pick in last year's draft, was going to be the guy to replace Matt Forte, but hey, he's looking like that guy. Once he took over the starting job, the Bears have a pretty good offensive line. Don't I don't think people really know that. I mean, they got Josh Sitton last year, but... I mean, the Bears offensive line kind of came out of nowhere, so you might not know that, but their offensive line, Kyle Long, has been pretty good for them for a while now. They got Josh Sitton, and Josh Sitton is still good to everyone else. I don't think Green Bay knew that. They might have done that for sour reasons, but Josh Sitton is still good. They drafted Cody White here in last year's draft. He was pretty good last year. And in their tackle situation, it's, it, it can use some improvement, but it's not, like, disastrous. It's not like the New York Giants tackles where we got Eric Flowers and whoever else is going to play right tackle this year. Hopefully not Marshall Newhouse trying to kill Eli in any given snap. So the offensive line, not that bad. Jordan Howard, really impressive last year. I thought, given the talent that was around him, he might have had the second most impressive rushing season last year behind Ezekiel Elliott, who had the most rushing yards. Jordan Howard had the second most rushing yards, which is kind of weird that rookie running backs had the top two rushing yards, and Howard wasn't even the projected starter, but that's what happened. The problem with the Chicago Bears, like I mentioned, is their passing game. The quarterback situation was the main problem. One of the problems last year was that Alshon Jeffrey was in and out of the lineup. He wasn't in there all year long. This year, he's not even going to be there because they let him walk in free agency. Honestly, I'm a fan of that move. I don't think Alshon Jeffrey was at this point with the Chicago Bears roster being what it is. I like Alshon Jeffrey, but if you can't be on the field, the best ability is availability to me. And if you're not going to be on the field, whether it's off the field problems or just getting injured, 
he, I don't think he really had a future with the Chicago Bears, and, you know, maybe he prospered somewhere, somewhere else, and that's cool for him, but I think for the Bears, that was actually the right move to let Alshon walk, don't burn up, you know, all your cap space on that guy as a wide receiver spot, try to develop other guys, see how it works out, maybe Kevin White works out, Cameron Meredith was actually really good last year, he was the one shining spot in their passing game, he caught a lot of passes, he came on as the year went on, they got Kendall Wright in free agency, so that's a decent pickup, he didn't really get a lot of playing time in the um, Titans the last couple of years, but when he's around, he's he's okay. He's okay. I could live with Kendall Wright as, you know, your slot receiver, your third string receiver. That's not a bad thing. And one of the things that shifts NFL landscapes more than anything else that I don't think is emphasized enough because this has more of an impact than the NFL than any other series in any sports, I should say, is draft classes. Draft classes, like this year's draft class, can affect the upcoming season of the NFL more than it would in any other sport because you're adding, you know, three, four, maybe five guys on the roster that if they make an impact, you know, the NFL is such a close, competitive, you know, oh, I don't want to say league. Yeah, that's the word, the league, that, you know, these guys can really shift and shape a record. They can give you an extra couple of wins. And the Bears, they don't really have those guys coming in this year unless Trubisky starts and goes off the rails, but the draft classes the last couple of years have been pretty, pretty decent. They got Leonard Floyd last year. I really like Leonard Floyd. They got Cody White here. I mentioned him. They got him in the second round last year. He was pretty good. They got Jordan Howard. That was an abs That was probably the steal of the draft last year. Fifth round draft pick Jordan Howard. <laughs> he, he looks really good. And I mean, running backs come and go, but I think Jordan Howard's got a future. Um, two, three drafts ago, they got Kevin White, who is TBD. We'll see how he does. He was injured all of his rookie season, so he kind of redshirted. And they got Eddie Goldman in the second round, and he looks pretty good. And then you got Kyle Fuller, who missed pretty much all last year. I think actually all last year he missed with an injury. And Kyle Fuller looked good. Kyle Fuller's looked pretty good so far his career. So you get Kyle Fuller back this year, and um, you got the secondary with Adrian Amos. Adrian Amos was, you know, decent safety last year. They got Quinn Dempson free agency, who's kind of a stopgap kind of guy. You hope that, you know, I believe they drafted a safety. Yeah, they drafted a safety in the fourth round. So I don't know if that guy's really going to pan out, but maybe he can learn behind Quinn Dempson and follow that up. But the defense is pretty decent in Chicago. It's not that bad. Like I said, the quarterback situation is the main problem in Chicago. The defense is not really the problem. You got Leonard Floyd, young guy. You got some of the older vets like Willie Young and Pernell McPhee rushing the passer. You got Goldman, young defensive tackle inside. Not too, too much depth in the defensive line, but I mean, you could, I mean, good depth, I should say. You got guys like Lamar, LeVar Houston, but I don't know how good he is now at this point of his career with all the injuries, but still a pretty decent front seven. They got one, one of the best linebacking middle linebacker duos in the league i would say in trevathan and freeman so that's something to watch out for their cornerbacks is actually not that bad they added Amukamara in free agency on a one-year contract I, I guess a lot of teams are scared about Amukamara getting injured so no one wants to offer him the big money deal that he's looking for so he's got a one-year you know prove it deal once again this season that they're having one in jacksonville he's got it in chicago i like the Amukamara and the giants the main problem was like i said the best ability is availability and Teams know that, and that's why they don't value Mukamar as much as they should, because he's a decent cornerback. He's a pretty good, capable starting cornerback as long as he plays all the games. He was a former first-round pick for the Giants. So him and Kyle Fuller, it's not a bad duel. You got, like, some random nickel cornerbacks like Callahan and stuff like that, who we'll see how they do. But otherwise, you know, it's not a bad defense. It's definitely... That's why I think the Chicago Bears are going to be decent this season, because as long as the quarterback situation isn't completely crap, which I don't think Mike Glennon will make it that bad, but, I mean, I don't really know. We haven't seen Mike Glennon play in a couple of years. It, it Matt might come down to Trubisky, who might make that quarterback play really bad, being the rookie that he is. But I think the Bears... The roster isn't that bad. They can lean on Jordan Howard in the running game. Jordan Howard having a full year as the starting running back. Because last year, you know, he, like I said, he didn't even start the whole year. And once he started, he averaged over five yards per carry and was the second leading rusher in the NFL. So <laughs> you lean on him a little bit, make it a little bit easier for the quarterback. The offensive line, they, they're they not that bad. It's just that, like I said, the Bears, the quarterback was really the problem last year. They threw too many interceptions, made too many stupid mistakes, kind of rushed passes and stuff like that. Maybe part of it's the fact that they didn't have the elite receivers that got open all the time but it's not a bad situation then the tight end spot the that's one thing i didn't mention zach miller's there that's pretty good they drafted a tight end in the second okay. round you hope that tight end learns behind zach miller and i believe his name is shireen you, you hope that guy shaheen that's what his name is you got you hope he learns behind zach miller and develops but otherwise i i like what chicago is doing but 
it really is up to Mitch Trubisky to make it or break it on whether this roster can take the next step. Because they traded a lot away to get him. They've invested a lot in this guy. So if Trubisky is the guy, playing devil's advocate, if Trubisky is the guy, I really, I'm, I'm pretty bullish on Chicago in the next two or three years to be a playoff team. So that'll basically do it for the Chicago Bears preview. Leave a like and a few of you guys enjoyed it. Anybody Chicago Bears fans out there, let me know what you guys think about the young crops on this team. Obviously, we're not thinking Super Bowl this year, but I personally, I like the direction the Chicago uh, front office is going in. So like I said, leave a like and a few of you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe for more. Let me know what you guys think about the Bears in the comments section, and I'll catch you guys next time.